this will probably be a very short film. Um, it's been a busy week at work. I haven't had that much time to do stuff on the car, but I've been trying to do a little bit every night. Generally, that's what I try to do is just one little thing. Um, even if you don't achieve much, it just keeps the momentum up on projects like this. But I have started doing the the timber around the axle openings. So if you imagine that goes in there. Um, thanks to a friend of mine who sent me the actual dimensions that they actually need to be. And I had to guess mine based on pictures of original cars. But it's a very difficult thing to measure because you can see the, the brake drums on, on this car is actually pretty big and there's a backing plate so you can't actually see in a side on shot of the car where that opening is because it's hidden behind the wheels and the, the brakes. So I kind of estimated as best I could and I ended up being about an inch off um, and that inch was in the width. So I've got my opening a little bit wider than it is on an original which is nine inches um, and the height is also nine inches. But the height, when I set the height to 9 inches, um, that does work out to be basically 4 inches above the top of the axle, which is what I figured the, the amount of clearance would be. And you can see it also puts that beam in the middle of the, the curve of the body, if that makes sense. So that's aesthetically, that is correct, that looks correct. And that gives me enough room around the axle and there's enough room in the opening to allow for things like the shock absorbers and um, the brake actuating bars. So that's all fine. Uh, obviously what I did here is because these are vertical um, I've set all of these to be vertical or, or perpendicular to the ground. I've taken the ground plane as my sort of zero uh, or my reference. So these are all vertical. Uh, that means that this piece, which is the top of the axle opening, needed to be uh, parallel to the ground, so completely perpendicular to this. So that made it really easy to cut the timber. It's just um, cut square ends. And what I've discovered is the bandsaw is easily the best way to cut these ends to be nice and flat and um, completely consistent. I did try sanding them on some of the earlier pieces I did, and it's actually harder to keep them flat on the sander than uh, just getting a nice flat cut on the bandsaw. And these are then just obviously glued and screwed in place. Um, and I had clamps on them and then I also used these uh, they're my, my, my milling 1-2-3 blocks just to make sure everything is at 90 degrees they work really well for this um, using the metalwork tools for woodworking easier than using a square the shape in here because this is halfway up it's almost flat there's a little bit of a step there this needs to be planed off there is obviously a little bit of a curve, but from my um, CAD model, I was able to, I guess, extract what that curve looks like, and it's almost a straight line. There's a very slight amount of crown on that, um, and that'll give me the, the shape in here. Uh, so I can trace that, and then that's what I'll trim this to. But the next step will be putting this back on the car. I have to figure out the order of operations so that I can assemble it, make sure everything is nice and square, able to be clamped up tight, but I can still access everything. So my plan now is to put this back on the chassis and then I can set up these pieces, which is the, the rear of the axle opening. And I can mark on these exactly where, where this needs to go in relation to that. And then I can screw those together and leave them, uh, leave the glue to dry on those. And then what I will do is then put the whole lot back on the car. 
with these attached, or rather I won't be able to do it on the car, I'll have to do it on the bench, but then I can line these up where they need to be and I figured out I will just be able to get the drill in to drill that to join it to this piece. Uh, so what I mean there is if you imagine that piece is on here, you can just get the drill in to drill those holes so you can put the screws in. And there should be enough room there to get a screwdriver in. Uh, so that's the plan. I'm about to go away for Christmas for a few days, so I won't be able to do anything for a little while. So I thought I'd film this bit now um, and either upload a short little film or I'll wait till I get back. I've done a little bit more. So this is the current progress. Um, it's just a matter of attaching one piece at a time or two pieces because there's two halves to the car but uh, attach one piece screw it all together let the glue dry and then treat that as the next single piece and then you screw something onto that so I've added the rear of the axle openings and you can see pretty clearly now how that axle opening works um, there are blocks that need to go in the corner with a radius on them so that when you fold the aluminium around you've got a, a, a radius edge to fold it around and you can see I've marked on here that line is the line that the body follows um, there is a very slight curve on it but it's almost straight um, and this is where if that was a straight line you'd get the aluminium close enough because when you're actually forming the panel, the panel's not going to be flat anywhere. It's going to have crown in it. Um, so, you know, if that was just a straight line cut off, that would be fine. Uh, I might as well try and put a little bit of curve in it, but that'll that'll come out uh, quite nicely. And you can see now, if we, if we look from the side, why it's very hard to estimate how big those openings are because it's completely hidden behind the wheel and the brake drum. So if it's from a side-on shot of the car, you don't see those openings. Um, I have tried bouncing up and down on it, and if you've got one side going down and one side going up, the, the clearance around the shock there gets pretty close. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if at some point you see some rubbing there. But I've seen that on other cars as well. And I just put the, the support across there just to help hold the two halves together uh, because the two halves aren't actually joined yet. So this will be joined onto here. Um, I was very careful to cut all the angles in there, neat, quite neat. Uh, so everything fits nice and tightly. And you can see how the rear of the seat back um, that'll be screwed on from the front and then there'll be finally the piece that goes from there onto this and then from there to the tail uh, so that kind of shows how the rear of it is coming together um, the I was able to figure out on my model so at the moment these the tops of these are cut square but on my model, I was actually able to figure out what the angle needs to be um, to cut those. And I will be able to check that because I can lay a straight edge um, across it. Because I know that these are more or less parallel to the ground. If I lay a straight edge across the top of those two, obviously it's going to touch on this point. Um, and this front point but i'll be able to measure the angle between here and there and it should be about on my model it worked out to be about 5.7 degrees so pretty much six degrees um, and the interesting thing is that kind of matches the angle of the chassis down here so the numbers all kind of line up neatly which i usually take that to be a good sign um, things seem to to work out nicely um, same as the 
these top pieces being pretty much in the middle of that curve, it means there's very little material to take off there. Uh, that will effectively be flat, more or less, um, because once the aluminium wraps around there, it's, it's pretty much almost flat. So it's getting there. Um, like I say, now it's our Christmas break, so we're heading away tomorrow. But hopefully when I come back, I can keep working on this. The other good thing is I've now come far enough that I can get rid of my um, MDF mock-ups, which are just basically getting in the way and annoying me. So I can get rid of those now.